This is the third uh, video about uh, worship and uh, religion in ancient Greece. Uh, this one, as the title uh, reveals, is about temples and the Parthenon specifically. Um, if you wanted to worship the, the gods, uh, you needed uh, three things. You needed temenos, which is a sacred area, a sacred space uh, where the worshippers could go. Uh, you need a temple, you need an altar on which sacrifices can be carried out. So. Uh, the Temenos, the space where people would gather, needed to be big enough for everybody uh, to fit into it, but also um, for everybody to be able to see the altar. Um, sacrifices never took place inside a temple. Uh, the spilling of blood would be, um, uh, uh, it would make the temple impure. So uh, altars tended to be outside uh, the temples, and that's where the sacrifices uh, would take place. The temple itself was actually a, a house for a statue of the god or the goddess, and in fact a statue of the god or the goddess. The statue, uh, a house for the god or goddess. Uh, the altar was for sacrifice, um, and sometimes you would just find an altar and there wouldn't be a temple attached at all. Clearly the altar, the place for sacrifice, was the most important thing, but do not confuse the idea and think that sacrifices took place inside temples because they just didn't. Um, a sanctuary, um, we use the word to mean a safe space, but I mean, if we look at archaeological sanctuaries uh, across the ancient world, they're, they're more like small villages. Um, a sacred site begins with the temple, but it could accommodate other buildings, and some of these sanctuaries were absolutely enormous. So you go to the sanctuary of Delphi, where you'll find the Temple of Apollo. Um, and it has a theatre, it has a stadium, it has shrines, it's got all sorts of buildings and statues. It's a huge place. Olympia had a stadium, hence the Olympics, a race course, gymnasium. These are not things we naturally associate with religious practice, but this is uh, part of, uh, if you will, it's like a religious complex where, yes, there are temples and there's a huge religious um, function to these spaces but there are other things if you imagine hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people visiting these places especially places where there are um, uh, oracles or uh, particularly gifted seers these are spaces that will uh, accumulate uh, other things you know shops and accommodation and so on so these complexes of religious buildings with other buildings attached to them that sprawl out. They're called sanctuaries. Now, the Parthenon, we're going to come back to the idea of sanctuaries later on, hopefully. The Parthenon is a massive temple. Uh, it's dedicated to Athena Parthenos, Parthenos being the word for virgin. She's the virgin goddess, hence, you know, you might imagine that a more natural uh, name for the temple would be the Athenon, or something more directly connected to Athena. But it's named, it is named after Athena, but it's named after Athena Parthenos, Athena of the Virgins. Um, it took ages to build. In the 5th century, uh, there had been an earlier temple um, which had been destroyed uh, by the Persians. So let's have a look at where it is. There's a map of Europe. There's Greece. Let's zoom in. There's Athens. Let's zoom in again to that picture at the bottom. And you can see we've got uh, the city of Athens. We've got long walls that come all the way out to the harbour at Piraeus, the port. Piraeus is a hugely important area for the prosperity of Athens because obviously that's where a lot of commerce and trade came. So the long walls are there to protect trade travelling from Piraeus to Athens. Here we've got a picture of the Acropolis, acro meaning high or point, and polis meaning um, city or a settlement. Uh, and originally we believe that uh, the first settlement of Athens, the first buildings of Athens, were on top of the Acropolis. So the Acropolis literally means the high city, the high town, the high settlement, something along those lines, you get the idea. But on top of the Acropolis, you can see there in the photograph, the remains of the Parthenon, the Temple of Athena. It is gigantic. Um, Athens originally was called Kekropia, after the founding king of Athens, Kekrops. Um, 
As Athens expanded, though, the settlement on top of the mountain, on top of the Acropolis, wasn't big enough. So um, fewer people lived on the Acropolis itself, and they moved down the slopes and into what we would recognize as Athens in the modern day. But what's left on top of the Acropolis becomes a kind of a, a center for temples and government buildings and administrative official um, uh, facilities. This picture here uh, gives an idea of the many things that you will find on top of the Acropolis. Um, just below me, um, in the top right, you can see the Theatre of Dionysus, um, which is very important. We will come to later on when we look at uh, the Dionysia. But there are two theatres. I think the Theatre of Herodes Atticus is actually a Roman theatre that came later. Um, other things which are of interest are the Temple of Athena Nike, um, uh, the Temple of Athena the Victorious, the Propylia Gates, which is the main entryway into that summit of the, um, uh, of the Acropolis. And then the two things which, well, let's go with three things which um, people have always have pointed out to them. Number one is the Parthenon itself. You can't miss it. It's enormous. That squeaking noise is Posca playing with... Posca, can you not do that? Cheers. Um, she's playing with some sort of what, leopard toy thing. Anyway, um, so we've got the Parthenon, which is enormous and nowadays is more or less in ruins, although there is a restoration program underway. There is the Erechtheon, uh, featuring the porch of the Caryatids. The, these are columns in the figures of, of um, uh, priestesses, I believe. And then beside the porch of the Caryatids is Posca. Thank you. Is what is believed to be the first olive tree, the olive tree that Athena gave to Athens at the founding of the city. Okay, here we've got uh, an imagining of what the uh, Parthenon would have looked like when it had originally been built, and then obviously below it we've got what it looks like now. Um, those of you who have done higher English, certainly in my classes, will have done the passages about um, the Elgin marbles and you know uh, the story behind the statues that were removed and are currently on display in the British Museum and the controversy that goes along with those. So I'm not going to read through this because it's a waste of my time and your time, but you should read through it yourself to get a sense of the size. The one thing to take away from this, aside from the scale of the temple, is um, uh, the fact that it was uh, designed uh, and decorated by Phidias, along with the uh, architects Callicrates and Ictinos, who and they actually supervised the construction. There's more history here, which is not going to be relevant for your purposes in the exam, but it's just interesting to see how the Parthenon managed to survive for you know two and a half thousand years and it's still standing much as it's ruined today it's quite an amazing story for a building to have here we have the elgin marbles that uh, were you know taken away in 1801 uh, those of us who if you don't know the story of the elgin marbles then you really need to look it up because it is uh, interesting and also some people would consider a scandal of our time i'm keeping quite a professional demeanor here while my dog is eating my hand um so much as we have a go at elgin for taking the marbles away from the parthenon other museums are equally well not equally but are also culpable uh in paris in copenhagen uh, and while a lot of them are in the now custom designed uh, Acropolis Museum in Athens. Um, but yeah, I don't want to get too far into that because that's not our concern here. The temple was a statement of power. It was a statement of wealth. You cannot build a temple that big out of such luxurious materials without impressing on people this is an expensive building and only a powerful city-state could afford to build such a building um, it's a symbol of wealth this is a wealthy city it's a symbol of power 
we have sufficient power in the Mediterranean to afford this kind of uh, construction. It's a symbol of the city's devotion to Athena. It has a massive statue of uh, Athena inside it, which is chryselephantine, which means it's made of gold and ivory. There's a representation on the screen there so you can see. Um, and the cost of the, the gold in the chryselephantine statue was such that uh, I think it was Pericles suggested that one of the reasons to build it was because if Athens was ever in economic need, they could simply melt down the gold in the statue to get themselves out of economic difficulties. This is a massively expensive uh, statue. The Parthenon was then used as a treasury uh, during the period of the Delian League, which for those of you who don't know, is effectively the Athenian Empire, when Athens had control over a number of um, island and non-island states around uh, the Aegean Sea. And finally, of course, the Parthenon was part of a complex, including, you know, huge structures. On top of the Acropolis, there is also a, a gigantic statue of Athena, whose suffix escapes me, which apparently could be seen from the port of Piraeus. If you can see this kind of structure from miles and miles away, and it's in your eye line as you travel towards the city constantly, you cannot help but feel the power of that place, especially at a time when large buildings, you know, kind of um, monumental buildings, were not commonplace. I mean, we're accustomed to seeing skyscrapers, which are absolutely gigantic. These didn't exist. So construction on this scale always had a powerful effect and as a statement of religious faith, economy, and military prowess, it's pretty damned impressive. I can't read this to you um, because I'm in the way, so let's try and move it around. The Parthenon hardly incorporated a single truly straight horizontal or vertical line. Some of you will have seen the episode of QI. They saved the Acropolis where the Parthenon is. If you don't know it, look it up on YouTube. It made me laugh a lot, but it might not make you laugh at all. But nonetheless, it makes a point. This bulging of the columns gave the building a more masculine look, and it made the temple seem perfect to the naked eye. This perfection was important at the time because the Greeks saw themselves as rising to the level of the gods. Now, to you or I, that sounds like hubris. That sounds like a people trying to get ahead of themselves, nonetheless. The level of the gods and nearing perfection. The Greeks had just defeated the Persians and they were feeling very confident. They built the Parthenon to show their dominance and strength. A key purpose of the Parthenon was to show their gratitude to Athena for helping them defeat the Persians. The statue of the god Athena that was built was 26 feet wide, 13 feet deep. It was made of wood which supported ivory pieces on top of the statue. very very important symbolic building i need to go and tend to my uh rather misbehaving dog who is now destroying a, a box which i need to stop her destroying uh, any questions the usual avenues uh please <laughs>